This is John with SoutheasternGeneralContractors.com. Finding the right general contractor is like finding a spouse. You have to have good chemistry. You have to be on the same page. You have to work well together. And you have to trust each other. By the end of this video, you'll be aware of the most common red flags to look for when hiring a general contractor, along with a few strategies for finding a general contractor that you'll love. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified each time we publish a new video and to follow along on all our custom design projects that feature helpful tips and tricks. And once you subscribe, be sure to click on the bell so you don't miss out. We have seen a lot in the 15 years in the custom construction market, and it should be noted there is no perfect general contractor. But as we inform all our prospective clients, you should look to work with the general contractor who you like, who tells it like it is up front, who has a great reputation, and has a documented and proven process to follow. We also inform our clients that there are some red flags they should be aware of no matter what general contractor they decide to hire. Here are eight common red flags to be on the lookout for when hiring a general contractor. Red flag number one. They have multiple lousy reviews across different sites online. We live in a world saturated with social media where it's harder for bad contractors to hide. When you see multiple bad Yelp reviews, Google reviews, Facebook reviews that slam a general contractor, your antenna should go up. Not that any one review is gospel. Review sites are often battlegrounds for competitors who unfairly slam one another. Anyone can have one or two bad reviews from here and there because let's face it, it's unrealistic to expect a business to have all happy clients. But a pattern of bad reviews from real clients is a red flag that should make you think twice. Red flag number two, they are not responsive. As in any long-term relationship, communication is key. If you have trouble getting in touch with a general contractor before you give them your business, chances are it will be even more difficult to reach them after they already have your deposit. Give a prospective general contractor 24 hours to return your introductory call, 48 hours tops, before you move on. Here's a pro tip. Find a general contractor that you are able to connect with in many different ways, such as mobile, text, messenger, or email. Red flag number three. The general contractor insists on a time and materials contract. The best way to wreck a budget is to sign a time and materials contract that puts no fence around expenditures. Make sure a contractor offers you a total cost for your project with a detailed scope of work and also outlines how change orders will be handled. If they won't do this, you should walk or run. Red flag number four. They lack a sense of humor. When it comes to construction, Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong, might be an exaggeration. No matter what, you should be prepared for unexpected problems to arise, especially when building custom homes, doing renovation projects, and additions. Look for a contractor who can keep his footing when things get rocky and has the experience to work through it with professionalism, a sense of humor, and with an easygoing temper while sorting out a solution. Have you ever built before? Were there any red flags that you ignored? Comment below and share your story with us. Red flag number five, they overpromise. Before you sign a contract with anyone, do your homework and get a rough idea of how long a project should take and cost. Beware of contractors who offer you a much lower price and faster delivery. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Red flag number six, they have outdated references. Good contractors have a constantly revolving list of new and satisfied customers. If they can't provide a current reference, perhaps the quality of their work has dropped. You don't want any old references. You want references for recent and current jobs and for jobs similar to yours. Red flag number seven, they ask for too much money up front. Most contractors ask for money up front to secure your place on a calendar, but a contractor who asks for more than 15% up front should elicit a uh-oh feeling. Normal deposits are 10% and are back through a bank. Let me point something out, however. Sometimes we have asked for the total amount up front when it's a cash deal. And here's the reason why. The only deal that we have had to go south over the years was a cash deal. We worked it the normal way where we got a small deposit up front and the owners were paying with cash money, essentially acting as the bank. The downside to that for an honest and reputable contractor in this case is that the contractor can be left holding the bag in the event that the owner decides not to pay. Long story short, if you're dealing with a reputable and honest contractor who has a proven track record like us, don't be surprised, especially if it's a 100% cash deal that we require a total contract price, even if it's in cash, to be put into an escrow account. And finally, we are very upfront with these types of clients that we will stack the draw heavier on the front end to protect ourselves. If you're dealing with a contractor who doesn't have a proven track record, then you may want to revisit this. 
Red flag number eight, they don't get permits. We gotta gut this whole job and start over from scratch. Wanna give a quick shout out to Skip Bidell, who we got to meet in Las Vegas at the International Builders Expo. He's an awesome guy. If a contractor waives permits as an unnecessary expense, wave him away. <laughs> building officials can shut down a non-permit job and without municipal building inspection, you have no assurance that the job is being done correctly and safely. You as the client should always want your job to have all the necessary permits and procedures followed. Now that you know the danger signs, let's focus on the positive. How to find a great general contractor. Here's how to find a general contractor whom you'll want to use over and over again. Investigate the heck out of them. The internet is your best aid for finding and vetting a general contractor. Number one, check reviews. Visit sites such as Facebook, Google, Yelp, Angie's List, and even check YouTube reviews. Number two, does the general contractor have a great online presence? Up-to-date website, website chat feature. The better online presence they have, chances are the happier you'll be in the end because companies with great online presence know the importance of satisfying their clients. Number three, when you find a potential general contractor, Google their business name and see what comes up. Do satisfied customers sing their praises? Do lawsuits turn up? If you find more negative comments than positive, you should probably keep searching. Number four, when you get a referral, dig deep for info. There's asking, and then there's really asking. When you get a name, drill deeper into the experience. Ask the following, was the contractor reliable? How soon did they return phone calls? Was the contractor responsive to concerns and changes? You want a firm yes to these questions. If you sense hesitance, make like a reporter and investigate. Get multiple bids, and don't let a low price dictate your choices. It's best to get bids from at least three contractors. Throw out both the lowest bids, because it's almost always overly optimistic. The industry norm is to go with the middle bid. For us, when we interview potential clients, we let clients know we are probably gonna be the highest quote they get. And the reason is, well, we know what it takes to satisfy our clients and to give them the level of service they expect. Again, we are very upfront and transparent about that. Number five, check licenses and litigation history. Although each state has its own oversight strategies for contractors, most require general contractors to be licensed. Also check state disciplinary boards, local court records, and the Better Business Bureau for problems. Pay special attention to the nature of the complaints and the way the contractor responded. Thanks for watching and hopefully we've made you wiser in your search for a general contractor that works for you. For more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit the bell and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any new videos. This is John with SoutheasternGeneralContractors.com. Let's build together.